Here's a quick one about food and cinema. No small part of the human experience is defined by our relationship to food, so it's no wonder why it can often be an evocative, visually and emotionally striking subject to capture. It's the elementary elements of cinema, those relating to nourishment and sustenance, that can connect us deeper to the characters indulging in it. Though after some thought, it seems like a bit of an odd pairing. After all, you miss out on three of the five senses, relegated to only depicting and experiencing food through sight and sound. It's here we see directors rely on film's inherent nostalgic qualities that have a way of transporting us to a time and place that makes it easier to fill in the sensory blanks. Even with that, there's an overwhelming visual element to food and the cooking process, one that translates pretty well to film. From how the food actually looks to how the food is prepared, the cutting, dicing, flipping, frying, baking, rising, grilling, food that fills the screen. Not just the cooking process, but how the food is delivered to us, the ins and outs of how restaurants and eateries operate, like in The Bear. The physicality of the labor, the attention to detail present in it all, from late night dive spots to the highest Michelin star restaurants, where food becomes art. Then there's documentaries on the food industry, from Anthony Bourdain's travels to parts unknown, to the adverse effects of factory farming, to milk, and who's got it. What food is good? What food is bad? Well, we know all about bad food. In 2022 alone, fast food companies made a forecasted $691 billion in revenue a stat I don't exactly find too appetizing. Fast food commercials and ads are a dime a dozen and almost impossible to not run into. How about the deep-rooted culture around food and movies, from food product placements to movie fast food tie-ins to drive-in theaters to dinner and a movie or dinner in the movies? With the endless snacking, crunching, and feasting you're sure to hear in a packed theater. I mean, the food doesn't even have to be real. Animated food can be just as, if not more, mouth-watering and olfactorily stimulating than the actual thing, with just as powerful messaging regarding its role in our narratives. There is Ratatouille, a movie about food's connection to memory, its ability to transport us to a time or even place, bringing us back to past moments in our lives and allowing us to relive them with increasing clarity. Or how about Miyazaki's wonder for food, his obsession really, and the joy with which he animates it? The texture, the minute details in its presentation and movement, from bouncy to glossy to crispy, savory food, moving and glistening, that in its pristine perfection and otherworldly nature, reveals his own fondness for the multiple dimensions of food and eating. That's a quote from Animating the Elementary by Ashley Dam. Food for Miyazaki is a concept that unifies all beings, from the lowest creatures of the forest, to the ravenous beasts of the field, to you. We empathize with the characters we see eating. After all, we all engage with food on some level every day. And just like filmmaking is a mode of communication, cooking is too, existing within this rhythmic creative process that connects all beings who find themselves under nature's dominion. There's iconic food moments in film, like the chocolate cake scene in Matilda, or the various cooking scenes in our favorite mob movies. Food that is shared with families around dinner tables, food that nourishes and sustains, food that connects us to generations of our own culture and the cultures of others. There's food we eat during the low times, food we eat during the high times. It's about high time we talked about cinema's uncanny ability to capture the way foods connect us, becoming an inseparable part of defining not only our relationships to each other, but to the silver screen. So the next time you see a juicy burger on screen that's good enough to eat, I hope you're filled with a rush of emotions that has you coming back for seconds, because at the end of the day, it's food. Now there's something to chew on. Mind Theater is a solo effort producer run by me, Awacking Bad A. For updates on the show, as well as my other content, follow Mind Theater Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. If you want to show monetary support, the Ko-fi link is in the show notes. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time.